Hey guys, this is Valmir here at the Leap Fireworks and we're actually in the back of our property right now uh, doing a new series for you guys. So if you are interested in getting into the fireworks industry, I highly recommend you watch the next couple of videos that we are going to post in our YouTube channel because we are gonna walk you guys through basically from step one all the way to opening your own fireworks stand and your own fireworks business, really. So obviously it can get a little bit complicated when we first got in the industry we were lucky but we were not lucky uh we kind of got in the industry and got kind of like screwed over but it, i know it's very helpful if you're looking to get into the industry to have someone to show you that hey this is the steps that you can do and what you should follow step by step so i have my little niece here but uh it is a family business but anyway guys so the first step that i highly recommend and one thing before i actually go on to this video is now this is based on our ex experience we are telling you what we have seen what has worked if it if this video helps you save some time or makes it easier for you starting into business to the fireworks industry we're glad we can help however though don't take all of this video as you know like a just straightforward as you guys do know fireworks is very regulated industry meaning that regulations vary from county to county from city to city and from state to state so number one rule that i recommend whatever you learn from here always check with your local government just to see that it is exact because they are different from town to town city to city but Overall, I think this can give you a very good general idea of a beginner steps. First step is buying a stand. And here's why I recommend first looking into buying a stand before you get the legal documentation. Now, obviously, if the legal documentations are very important. And we're going to have a video on that later on. Uh, but I recommend buying the stands first because once you buy the stand, then as far as the legal documentations, it takes a couple weeks and you're going to be basically set up not an issue but it can get a little bit difficult buying a stand so there's two routes that you can go with a stand so you can buy a stand from someone who already was in the industry or you can actually build your own stand obviously the faster route of is to buy a stand out there so websites that could help you for that believe it or not craigslist is always a good option because there's always people getting into the industry and outside the industry now right now the time of this video prices for everything in life are inflated so it's ridiculous some of the firework stands prices that you pay but for instance we're gonna show you one of the stands stand like this i would depending on some, so something like this so this is the reason why i want to show this is because uh, this is something like maybe of a starter location if you go ahead and show them this stand on right here so this is a 40 foot container that we have for our industry that we make ourselves however though i do not and as my brother is showing you here, many different That's stands. Fun. But when you're first starting, I don't recommend going with a huge container. Go with a 20 foot container, 25 con foot trailer, something like this. The reason why it's less expensive and it's also cheaper to move, okay? So the reason why I recommend with a smaller stand is because it is something new in the industry. Now, if you do have the capital, if you have the capital and you can afford it, obviously i do recommend building your own stand it is more expensive but if you build your own stand obviously if you're not a handyman and you cannot build it yourself find a local welder or someone that can actually you know can cut through the metal and actually build the whole frame from the windows to everything that needed for the stands or often often there's containers uh, places where you buy your containers because fireworks in our industry a lot of the stands are actually fireworks containers it is very it's often you'll see the place that you buy your fireworks container they actually do build fireworks stands because they or they know someone so that's always a recommendation that you can have but anyway this is a starter location so for instance if you look at the starter location obviously from the outside of the stand what we recommend is if you're building your stand or if you are looking out earlier i recommend the windows to have them every four feet five feet the reason why we've seen some people they'll have one window from here all the way to here whether that's a 10 feet 12 feet even 16 feet one window i don't recommend that because if in case there's any issues or something with a window that's too much weight and guys we are in a very regulated industry but if something happened you don't want to get sued or something so just make sure see what everyone is doing and see why because majority of the stands they have smaller windows and so on right 
But anyway, as far as the stands, whenever you buy a stand, regulations are different from town to town, city to city. But for instance, notice here, this stand is actually about 25 feet in there. There's a, there's a door there, and there's also another door. So there's also another door right here. Because here in Harris County, the regulation is every 20 feet you need a door. So hypothetically, let's say you open a 10 foot stand. Technically, you only need one door, right? Uh, but anything over 20 feet, you need two doors. So our 40 foot containers, that's why they have an entrance on the left side, an entrance on the right side, because that's what you need, okay? All right, so we're actually inside of stands. So we're gonna walk you guys in now. This is one of our older stands. So let's go ahead and come in. This is one of our older stands. The stand that you just saw right there, that one we actually sold. So this is one of our, well, we have only two stands that we have now that are the older, not 40 foot container. But the reason why we wanna share this instead of the 40 foot container, because uh, those are very custom made, whereas these ones are a little bit more of the basic where you see. And when we first started with this, obviously this stand is a lot cheaper than the ones that we have, the 40 foot container. So we wanna give you something where it's more relatable. Obviously, so, I'm gonna show you a little bit on the stand whenever you buy, if you're building it or if you are buying on what regulation. So look, this is very accurate when it comes to Harris County, but like I mentioned earlier, make sure you check with your local county uh, and the fire department, fire, fire marshals department, just so you're up to code. But for instance, notice here, for instance, we're on the inside, so it's very similar. So you have the windows and for safety aspects, we, what we have with windows, we actually have them locked up with, well, this one's like, anyway, but we have them locked up with these. So you lock it like this, just because you don't want someone to break in, right? Now, this is an older design. Some of our newer stands, they have with the hydraulics. So it's very easy. All you have to do, you just push and it holds itself. But with these ones, we base, especially if this one's an old design, where we put them up and right now, because they're damaging, we zip tie it, we have it on the other side. But of course, one of our newer designs, Hydraulics, you don't have to worry about Relatable. it, but this is something, exactly, that's, it's faster, you don't have to worry about nothing. Now, as far as like the fireworks, obviously this is a different design, our newer fireworks stands, it's all countertop here, so it's fully, whereas with this one, it actually folds. The reason why we did on this one, because this trailer, it's actually on wheels, Normally, so it would be too high, so we did that, so it would be better for the little kids. But anyway, as far as, obviously, whenever you open your stand, everything on the countertop here, it has to be clean, okay? So you don't, you cannot have anything here that can be some sort of a hazard. Now, as far as the lighting, obviously, we chose to put our lighting here on top, but of course, you, on the right side, but you can have them on top, that doesn't matter. Now, every firework stand, you are required to have a fire alarm. So this is one of the alarms. And this is one for this stand, but our, our two. bigger stuff, oh, we have two, okay? Yeah, so two. two. So you're required actually two. So our 40 foot containers, which I'm actually more familiar with because those are now our standard. Now you do need fire alarms. You can put them on top or to the side as we have done. So as far as the shelf, obviously whenever you start, I do see this very often. A lot of people, you just put uh, Home Depot shelves, surely, or something like that, because maybe you're not handyman, you cannot fix them, but if you're able to fix it, I think it can be cheaper and you can customize it. So for our stands, for this design, basically we have all the small stuff in the middle, we have some of the cakes here, and then the assortment on this side. Now again, this design is a lot different from our 40 foot containers, but this is something that you wanna have because you wanna have variety in your firework stands from you know, you want to have the small stuff, smokes, small fountains, sparklers, firecrackers, and so on. You want to have fountains for a lot of color in the ground, cakes, automatic that you light one time in the air. You want to have canisters and, of course, assortments, okay? So, now, as far as the shelf space, so, as you notice, we've basically all the shelves, like, here, they go here, but we've done this angular. You do not need to do the angular, but the reason why we did this it's just because, for instance, some of our products, sometimes we would have, if we put, let's say, some here prop products, and sometimes we'll have a product maybe go out one inch or two inch. If we didn't have this, then the fire marshal, when they come to check the item, they'll be like, nope, the item is out, and it could be a hazard, okay? And that's here in the Harris County, how they are. So, for instance, if you notice on the bottom, this is a three foot, and this one, we don't put any products over here because it becomes a hazard. Whatever your shelf space is, you cannot have items go over it. 
So that's a regulation here in Harris County, and I think it's very similar for other places. And if it's not, I mean, I recommend because it's just something that an extra, I guess, safety aspect, okay, that different. Because the reason why, if you're wondering for that, why do they do that, is let's say hypothetically, if there was a fire or something like that, we do have like uh, cloths or like you can have like a piece of wood or something, you can just put it over and it'll cover that whole space. Obviously, you don't want to be in the stand if there's a fire. We've been in the industry for over 10, up for 10 years now and we haven't had any accidents like that however though it is a possibility okay so whenever you're buying your stand also something that i recommend and you need to uh well it's a requirement is you gotta buy coins okay so we have these big coins but you don't need those big ones it can be any of the small stuff because they get more pricey lucky for us we actually got those in auctions so even for you if you're looking if you can find them in auctions especially if you're looking to open multiple locations it can be something where you can save extra money but you do need cones now here in harris county they do require that you have to put cones around your stand within 10 feet of everything usually per stand we depending on the location if it's a small location four to five cones is perfect some of our bigger majority of our bigger location we put seven to eight cones and there are some locations because the way we park it it might be exposed to more parking spots we do go ahead and put more cones so it just varies okay now as far as the stand which we over here front and with us we take all of our legal documents which we have here but we're actually going to talk about that in another video but of course with they whatever you put in your stand you have to have the legal documents in there because when the fire marshal comes to check your stand uh, and this is very for for seasonal business like usually they come to check the stand in the first couple of days they basically look where that paperwork is to see if you're legally allowed to actually be there. All right, so one thing that I wanna mention though, we forgot to mention is that with fire extinguisher, obviously you do need a fire extinguisher in your stand. Now, depending on the size of your stand, it's gonna be one or two fire extinguishers that you need, but it's also often that some counties do require a fire, fire extinguisher where your generator or your light tower is. So obviously check with your county, but just make sure you do need these and you they need to be up to date and obviously have it somewhere where it's handy when it comes, if in case you need to use it for some sort of accident, because you don't want to put it and hide it behind boxes. In case something happens, you want to know exactly where it is to take the right precaution. All right guys, so we are flip-flopping stands with you guys, but right now we are outside to show you some of the legal requirements that are for firework stands in the outside, okay? So obviously the reason why we're switching stands because with this one is up to date and this is something that we recommend that you guys do because uh, one thing that I wanna show you, so notice the no smoking sign. So obviously, you are required to put a no smoking uh, sign and now it might vary in distance between county to county or state to state however though we are required to put that now for our county we are required to put in all sides and if a stand is over 20 feet you're supposed to put in two different places you're also required to put the address which we put there now something that i recommend notice we are outside the firework season but the signs we already have on there what is actually very common in our industry that we notice here in Texas, and which I don't understand why, a lot of businesses, what they do is they take off the signs outside of the season and they put them back on. Now, if you have one stand, two stand, that's fine. But when you have a bunch of stand, whenever you're taking the stands on the location, that actually adds more time that you're going to be there rather than go quick. So what we do for us, we leave them on. That way we don't, we don't, never have to worry about oh did we forget to put the sign did we not so we know legally we're going to be up to code another thing that it's required they're very technical it's about electricity so we'll show you on this side that we have so obviously to run your stand you're going to need some sort of power now majority of firework stands are basically you got to have a generator uh, there is times where you find a location so we'll talk about that but with on that property you'll have like uh, they'll have electricity which you can borrow, but again, we'll talk about that, but you are required to have uh, some sort of electricity. Often what happens is with a lot of, a lot of us, we use generators, okay? Now, notice the cables over there that we have on top. Now for electricity, basically, it's a regulation here that 
any electrical electrical wires they have to be over 12 feet if i'm not mistaken uh but yeah it depends county to county it varies from yeah. county to county like i said but for our county we have 12 feet it has to be over so for instance whenever you have your electrician search make sure you have it up and then what the next thing what you want to do obviously it varies county to county but in our county the generator has to be at least 15 feet away from the stand and obviously you you don't want to put it next to a car or something like that use common sense but the generator for instance often some of our locations we put them in grass now if you put your location your firework stand in grass and that means you have to put your generator in grass it is a regulation here that you cannot leave it on grass just because you don't want to cause a fire so you can put something on top the cheapest way which we recommend is a pallet when you get your fireworks they come with pallets so that way grab one of those pallets put it there and then every day you put your generator on that pallet that's what we recommend just so you don't have to worry now obviously if you put your generator on the pallet on the ground you cannot just go from the top down because again going back to 12 feet you cannot have the cable so you're gonna have to put like a stick where you wire your cable and then it goes over and then down where the generator is because you don't want to have any any hazard anything else that we need from outside that we need to recommend Castro? they make the generator you cannot put it inside but we have light over they yes. make so the cage that, yeah, yeah. so if you do have yeah that's a very good yes thing. i forget it by that so something that we forgot because we don't deal with it is if you had a question where where do you put the generator after the season like where you to be out before it was very common before they added this new rule a lot of firework guys they'll just put them inside of the fireworks stand at a place where there's no fireworks they'll put bar like they'll put uh pieces of wood over just so nothing you know no heat nothing but now they actually made it where and a lot of times we see they what they do for the generator they create a cage outside of the firework stand so where you can put your generator when this when the night is over right but That's for us tough. the reason why i forgot and thank you for mentioning Kassian, is that for us we don't deal with that because all of our stands have light towers which they're permanently outside and we use the light tower to generate electricity as well as make our stands a lot more bright so there you have it but anyway guys thank you so much and if you guys did enjoy this hit a thumbs up and if you are want to learn a little bit more please continue watching all the other videos as we post them on everything else that you need for the fireworks stands